In this session, we are actually going to experiment how to go and generate an entity model. Entity model is crucially important before we all begin creating ASP.NET web forms to provide database-driven web application interface. Now, let's take a look at the Solution Explorer. You see, within the Solution Explorer, I have actually created a folder called data access layer. How I actually create this folder is just by right clicking on the project title and select add and select new folder. Now let's take a look what is inside this data access layer folder. Inside this access layer folder you will notice that I have already created an entity model and you notice that the file that describes an entity model is having a file extension of EDMX. And what I am showing in the main screen window inside this Visual Studio.net is the output or the content inside this entity model file. You will notice that it is actually describing four entities. Right? And these four entities are actually derived from the database table itself. Okay? So right now in order to go and reproduce the output, I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete the webadb.edmx right so I'm permanently deleted it and right now I'm actually going to right click on the data access layer folder select add and select new item so this add new item dialog window will launch and I'm going to make sure that the data section is actually being selected among the installed templates and you will notice that there are many selections here and I'm going to select ado.net entity data model so I'm going to click the add but before I click the add I must make sure that I rename this model file as web adb so that I will know that this model is actually going to be derived from all the database tables that I have already defined inside the webadb.mdf uh, database file so I'm going to click the add and I'm going to tell the Visual Studio.net that I'm going to generate the content within this file from the database so I'm going to click next and of course Visual Studio.net is helpful enough to point out that here are some selections for you and of course the only selection I have is the webadb.mdf database file after that you will notice that I am actually given an option in order to go and save the entity connection settings right inside the web dot config file. Now previously I have already generated an um, entity model and then I've deleted it. So uh, I don't think that I can actually reuse the web adb entities unless I delete away the pre-existing entity connection settings. So right now if I click next you'll notice that there will be actually some restriction from the Visual Studio.net saying that uh, web adb entities conflicts with the existing property name in the application setting so please choose a different name so what if i die die want to go and reuse web adb entities is there an option yes i'll just need to have some experimental attitude go to the web.config file and find the existing property connection string that help us to connect to the database file and delete it then I'm actually going to click save and I'm actually going to attempt my right click effort again right right click on the data access layer add new item select ado.net entity data model and specify a more meaningful name and click the add button generate from database and right now let us hope that my experimental mood have given me some rewards so I'm going to click the next button and voila I'm in the next step now what is the next step the next step is that entity models are derived from database tables so what are the existing tables inside my database there's attendance I want attendance I want event I want gender and I want prospect and I do not want sys diagram okay so right now you notice that the model namespace that has been given to me is called web a DB model and there are some very beautiful options that I must remind you is that notice that there are these two checkbox here 
pluralized or singularized generated object names right and uh, include foreign key columns inside the model these are very very useful okay normally I select it and you notice that the table naming convention that I have used I used all singular word attendance I never use attendances event I never use events because by naming the tables as meaningful as possible as a singular way this will give us a lot of meaning especially when we are doing coding right at this point of time these are the important points that I would like to go and uh, flush out right now in this video right but detailed um, purpose is really up to experience build up when you experiment more and more uh, coding yourself so right now I'm going to click the finish button and Visual Studio .net will actually try to go and create the models and you'll notice that uh, everything is actually being nicely done and of course I will definitely need to go and save all my effort and this is actually the end of the video demonstration of how an entity model is actually being created derived from a SQL server database file thank you very much Thank you for your time.